Coming on to the brainstem. So the brainstem, so we talked about the cortex, the frontal cortex, the parietal cortex, the occipital cortex, and the temporal cortex. This here is the cingulate gyrus. And then you've got these subcortical structures here called the corpus callosum. The corpus callosum connects the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere because the brain itself has actually got a longitudinal fissure which divides the two sides. Now that connection, the corpus callosum, is the key connection between the left side of the brain and the right side of the brain. There is a minor other connection between the frontal lobe called the anterior commissure, but predominantly it's this structure here which connects both hemispheres. Now it's such an interesting organ that even if you cut this connection, the brain still functions. In fact, cutting the corpus callosum was uh, and still is a treatment for refractory epilepsy. And despite actually cutting that structure, the brain is still able to function. There's some decrease in certain things, as you can imagine, but I just find it remarkable that despite all of this, the brain continues to function. Beneath that, we have the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla. This is the brain stem. Now, this is really important uh, functions of survival now we're talking about. So a lot of the autonomic uh, things in human being, whether it, be vent, whether it be respiration, whether it be cough, coughing, whether it be breathing, that's all modulated through the brainstem. The midbrain is involved in temperature regulation, vision, hearing, sleep, wake cycles, because a lot of the, the system just around the midbrain is called the limbic system, which is involved in consciousness and making you awake and sleep. Beneath that is the pons, which is involved in fish, in equilibrium, taste, keeping your eyes fixated. There's something called the medial longitudinal fasciculus, which if you have a lesion there, then you're not able to fixate your eyes clearly on one point. And I don't know if you've seen anyone with jerky eyes, but that's called nystagmus. On the tube, you can see it. If you look opposite you, just as the tube sets off, if you look deeply into the eyes opposite you, although that can cause you a problem in London, um, you will see that eyes are just jerking a little bit, and that's called nystagmus. That's physiological, that's normal, but if a patient is doing that at rest, then there's a problem in the pons, in particular in the MLF, or medial longitudinal fasciculus, which is an area of very high dense, uh, dense neurons. The medulla is involved in ventilation and respiration, um, but all these structures share functions, but they just have a very complex um, system of neurons that go through it.